Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Get Dirty Garage. Today, I'm gonna start working on the rear window. Got some repairs to do there, some uh, 50 year old rust holes and things like that. So what I'm gonna show you today um, is how to take this and turn it into that. So you can turn this into this with just some ordinary hand tools. So stay tuned, should be interesting. We'll, uh, we'll give it a try and see what happens. So, well, let's go ahead and let's get dirty. Is this thing on? Yeah. Well, today we're going to try and tackle this uh, rear window frame try and get that cleaned up and see what we got to work with and know already that, you know, we're going to need uh, some repairs in the corners. That's pretty typical of the Elkos, but I'm just not sure what, um, you know, how much metal is still left in there. So we'll get that cleaned up and take a look and see where our starting point is and go from there. So let's, uh, let's go get it. Okay, to get uh, get this cleaned up, I'm gonna start with a pretty aggressive wire wheel and uh, see what we can do to get some of this rust and gunk out of here. And we'll see this will pretty much tear through just about any uh, any rust holes and leave you uh, leave you wondering why you did it in the first place. But we'll see what happens. pretty good indication of where we're at and where we're standing. A few uh, minor discrepancies, but not too bad. We'll get you in there for, for a closer look. All right, so gonna get in those corners a little bit with a different brush, but uh, I've seen lots worse. And a nice spot there few along that bottom rail where all that water sits and that corner over there is going to be the trouble spot but up along the top actually looks pretty decent and a few little spots there but I'm thinking it's pretty salvageable so we'll see what we can do to clean out those corners and Make some, uh, make some patches. All right, gonna get into this corner in here with a little whizzer wheelie dealy on the drill and try and clean this out.
that'll get us a decent starting point because most of that's got to come out anyway. A few little spots up in there, but really I think the the corners, um, one side up in in the sail over there, and then just a few spots along this lower rail should get us pretty much back together. This looks like the worst of them, so let's uh, let's start on uh, start on this corner and show you how to make a uh, show you how to make a patch with some simple tools and some really poor metalworking skills. So go from there. So the first step in anything uh, repairing rust like that, typically I like to leave everything in place as far as, I, I'm not gonna cut that out first, uh, but first thing you wanna do is make a template. And best thing for that, especially if you've got something to, to back to, is just some good old fashioned masking tape. Get uh, the area taped up here. Um, in here, Basically what we've got, we've got, it's actually, we're fairly lucky. This portion of the sail panel is fairly flat. And it bends into the window channel here, which is basically disintegrated. It takes a curve around, and obviously this is an, uh, uh, like a 90 degree channel here for the window. But this section right here, um, it's got a curve. It's going like this, also like this and then curving up into this area up in here. So interesting little challenge to, uh, to form that, but I'll show you kind of a simple method. Um, just takes a little bit, of, uh, little bit of patience and some new tape since I, uh, I'm playing with that one. But put a couple of layers of tape on there in order to make it firm. Work that down into the contours of that as much as possible. Make sure we're doing a few layers so that when you take the tape off, it's going to be firm and easier to work with. But basically, imagine the, the form that you're trying to make. Get the tape to take that shape. And that way you're kind of duplicating the metal that used to be there. Used to be is the, uh, the key words there, so doesn't have to be super neat. It's just got to be solid down in all of the joints, grooves. Try and make the curves as close as possible. And what I want to do here is really kind of try and make this flat portion all one section, take a bend going out this direction from that window channel, and I'll try and form this extension of that channel out of that same piece, and I'll show you that. But really want to try and mark out where it transitions from flat to the curve here. So, Something like that. So that's the flat portion here. And then I'd like to take this to that seam, or it seemed to, uh, to this piece here. Follow that curve of the channel there. And really what I'm laying out here is kind of the the piece that's going to go along this section here 
where all the contours and shapes are going to be because it's got kind of a bowl in there that's going both directions at the same time. And we'll take this out, extend it out here to good metal. Get along the edge there. And I think I'll take that up to about in here someplace. I'm going to also mark off basically the lowest point so I know kind of where that fold line has to be. Now to get ahead of that, obviously this section's got kind of a wicked, uh, wicked little curve in it. I know I'm going to have to get some cut some relief, so I'm going to start those cuts kind of at the start of this radius and the end of that radius, and have to uh, make some cuts in there in order when I fold this portion up. So you see this going to come up this direction. Uh, this will be a separate piece, so this will be one piece that goes along the sail and then into the window channel, and that will be a second piece. So basically two flat pieces, got to form both of them, and, but we should be able to have just a, a quick set of tacks along there, tack this together, and that way we have some minimal welds that will hold all that, those pieces together. So I'm going to pull the tape off cut out uh, the patterns, lay them on some flat sheets, and uh, we will go from there. All right, so I've got, uh, got these laid out on semi-flat pieces of metal. You can see as uh, I flattened this, this one out, I mean, I had to get some reliefs in that corner, so when that bends up, um, that'll kind of all fold together, and I'll show you what, uh, how that works here. But uh, I got them on there. I'm going to leave a little extra on this one just for something to hang on to as I form that. And I'll show you why here in a minute. So we'll get to, uh, to cutting those out and show you, what, uh, show you what next steps are. So i got my fancy cutter outer tools here. I'm going to leave these just a little bit big just so that I have some room to grind or adjust as necessary because cut them off more than you can uh, a lot easier than you can add to them so Too. You could zip these out with uh, one of the sparkly wheel of terror, but I'm just going to try and show you how to do this with, uh, with just hand tools. So if you decide to tackle something like that yourself, you can feel a little confident that you're not the first one to try it, I guess. So neither am I. <laughs> So that's going to piece. It's got to. That's the piece that's got to be kind of formed to fit in that bowl and stuff up there. We'll get this monster one cut out here. See if my hands hold up. Okay. So if you remember, this kind of was laying in there. This side's being flat, semi-flat. A lot of. Uh, shaping and so on you can do with uh, with just your hands 
But first really direction that this thing wants to go is kicking this corner up to lay across the flat part of that. So just grab a, uh, a quick benderizer. Got, uh, got these, um, they're, I think they're called like uh, creasing shears or something like that, hand seamer. So anyways, pretty, uh, pretty nifty, cheap tool, but they can grab onto that pretty easily. And also make longer folds fairly easy. So I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers for the other side real quick. All right, so just want to bend that portion up somewhat on a 90. Same thing on that seam. And have to be perfect or anything in there. And I will clean that up just a little bit on the uh, on the vise, but these will fold up in there as well. As you can see, we've got kind of a start on that shape here. Twisting to do. All right, so got a uh, got a start at that, and uh, what I will do is just keep working the bends and the curves. So we get kind of a matching shape. As we close in on kind of what uh, what direction we're trying to take that first. Cut this up a little bit more. And grab the master tool. kind of concerned with getting basic form to follow kind of that outline so I think that gets us in pretty decent uh, pretty decent area that one will kind of match up in there so get a uh, get a start on that um, basically trying to match up this bottom curve and then being flatter on this side. I'll clean up some of these folds here. I'm just gonna clamp uh, that portion in the vise, try and fold stuff over on itself and try and get a spot where we can get, uh, get things tacked together. So that should come out okay. Let's see, clean that curve up just a little bit. And 
this section of this kind of rolls out a little bit. That's why it's forming like that. Gets us a decent start at it, I think. Okay. Now for this piece, so I said there's multiple different curves up through there, and actually, um, since we're, uh, we're actually fairly lucky that you know a lot of the sheet metal is there. But essentially, that's got to fit up in there, and I've got to kind of make those tapers and curves and all of that. So, just to go about that is just multiple different light taps, trying to stretch and form the the patch into uh, the metal that is already there. So that's why you really don't want to cut anything out before you get a chance to uh, to make a patch. So we'll uh, give this a go and. Just takes a little bit of patience and we'll see how uh, we see how we come out the other side. see we're starting to make that curve on this end to match the radius inside here so get that set down in there and As you work and stretch that metal a little bit, you're going to get the edges to fold and curl. Just kind of keep flattening them back out, but just working a little bit at a time in kind of the lowest areas. Make that bowl in there. kind of see where this is starting to take a, uh, a bowl shape in in through here where it's going this direction and that direction to kind of match up with what's going on up in this corner here so we're getting close to that You can kind of tell when you're getting close to the shape because it stops bouncing so hard around. Um, so you just want to keep working in it and keep a uh, consistent light pressure. So 
So I think actually we're pretty close. You can see the back side of that is it's kind of bold and bowed. But uh, this is kind of following that contour that's rolling up in there. Fits fairly square in there. And they have some trimming and gap filling to do, I think. But I kind of like where that's headed in the right direction. Now this should be kind of where that gets cut. But I want to kind of see how those fit together. You can see they're fairly close. Let me trim this one off. So that should fit there, that should fit there, and really the only welding will join those two here and along this seam here. Um, and that should give us kind of that odd shaped patch a little bit. So um, let's take these over to the vise. I wanna work on this section, get it uh, squared up, cleaned up a little bit so that it's uh, pretty, pretty flush in there, but kind of like the way that one has turned out and the way that it's sitting in there. So let's go uh, play with the hammer just a bit. All right, the vise that I have has a nice, uh, Nice flat area for metal smashing and then um, obviously the jaws and so on. But what I want to do first is just kind of clean up that, that preliminary fold. Make a little crisper. And again, when you're moving sheet metal around, it really does not take hard hits with the hammer. Just a little bit at a time and it will form itself pretty easily. So and these ears that we Fold it over. I want to try and get those coming in the right direction. Flatten out those edges. And 
And I think that's, uh, that's pretty flat at this point. Getting there anyways. Almost flat enough to be welded. And I know you probably know this, but only hit the high spots. Don't hit the low spots, because then you're just stretching. All right, well, I think that's quite a bit closer to being able to fit in there. So let's take it over to, uh, let's take it over the car and see how, see how it matches up. Alright, I got our piece that we we're playing with uh, clamped in there, um, just so it's clamped on this window ledge here. And fitting this other formed piece up to it, I think we're really close. So, got a little bit of trimming to do. Basically just going to mark off where that has to, uh, has to be trimmed. Now remember when we get this, the metal of the car cut out, it's actually going to go down just a little bit, in just a little bit. So you got to leave some allowances in order to uh, make sure you don't cut the, cut the hole too big. But just going to trim up this edge right here where the two meet and we should be in pretty good shape. I think that gets us uh, close enough to throw a few tacks in it. So I'll get the starting point and then we get the welding and grinding on that. So in, uh, in pretty good shape, I think. At least close enough for who it's for. By the way, what do you get when you cross an elephant? with a rhino. Elephino. All right, let's uh, make some progress. All right, so we're back with the finished product there, or semi-finished anyways. Don't get me wrong, there's quite a bit of uh, welding and grinding and some more fitting and other things that went on in between, um, you know, just tacking it and getting it in, uh, in kind of a permanent form there. But really at this point, I think it's fitting pretty good. And what I just uh, need to do is trace out where we're gonna make, uh, make the cuts. And then get rid of the rusty parts. So. Now, this uh, inside seam there is spot welded on, so we'll have to do some prying and maybe some digging in order to get, uh, get that off, but let's see if we can't get some cutting out accomplished here and get into final fitting and getting it to the car, so a little bit of progress.
Okay, so here's our finished product. Um, you guys are pretty lucky that the battery died and saved you from a couple hours of uh, welding and grinding and swearing and no, just teasing. But uh, it was a lot of work in between then and now. But um, as you can see, we got uh, everything into those grooves and corners, shaped pretty well, tied it into here. And while I was in here, I actually uh, replaced this, uh, this um, window ledge all the way up since that was a little bit rough but got that in there and again I'm not looking for perfect but uh, looking for a good base in order to get our body work finished off so hopefully that helps a little bit and um, just uh, you know give it a try tackle some uh, some tough spots and if you don't like it grind it out and do it again Hey, well that's going to do it for another edition of Let's Get Dirty Garage. Hopefully that gives you kind of a good idea, you know, take on some, some tougher stuff and, you know, with some simple tools. Um, just takes patience, uh, a little bit of trial and error, and you can do it too. So, hey, listen, I appreciate you watching. Uh, listen, hit the sub like button, hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends, family, all that fun stuff. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Take care.